morning, happy Friday. We are out. We just took the kiddo to school and we're gonna play some tennis. Um, Obes and I are on a little date before I go. Um, I think we're gonna play tennis, get breakfast, and then I'm gonna have to run and shower and do all the things. No, that's the plan. I lost um, pretty pretty badly, quite frankly, which it might surprise you. I have actually never lost to Obes before. I always, usually win. Sometimes we've tied, but that's pretty rough. I think I was a little distracted. That's what I'm gonna blame it on. Um, you guys, it's happening. I'm leaving. I'm going to pull my car around because Obes is gonna load my luggage for me. But I'm feeling really sad <laughs> about going. I just feel, um, I just want keep wanting to linger and hang out and not ever go because I'm gonna miss him so much. <laughs> Look how cute, I can't handle it. Um. So we finally took time, We Obi and I took time to say goodbye, um, and it's about 11.22 now. I have a two hour drive, and I wanted to get a special beverage, like always, to go um, on the drive with me, <laughs> but they didn't have, I was gonna come get bubble tea, because that bubble tea was so good yesterday, but they are closed. They're not open until noon, and I'm not gonna wait that long. So I think we'll go get coffee, um, and then we'll hit the road. I'm feeling, sad to go but also kind of antsy and ready to go ahead and go I've been preparing and like it's just it feels like prolonging you know to wait around so I'm ready to I'm ready to go and also I never wanted to leave if that makes sense so I think we need to go get coffee the moment there I thought maybe I would just stick with water which maybe is what I'm gonna do it's not very me of me <laughs> But I do kind of feel like um, I don't want to make another stop and I'd rather just be hydrated, I think, because I'm going to be on a lot of planes. So adding a coffee I don't need into the mix when I could just drink water is probably not what I want to do. So I think we're just going to stick with water. Surprise, surprise myself every day. But I'll check back in when we get to Charlotte. I am... It's about, yeah, like a two hour drive to Charlotte. And then um, I'm going to a new coffee shop that I haven't been to there yet called Night Swim. I wanna go try that out. And I figure I'll, that's where I'll work for the day. I just kinda get down there and get some work done. I think it's like 12 minutes from the airport so it's not gonna be too much trouble. So let's do that. So the gas light came on, we we're like an hour and a half away. It was actually two and a half hour drive. So we've been on the road for about an hour. The gas light hit, which was perfect timing because I'm so hungry. Um, just, I like, it was just like one second and I was ravenous. So that's where I'm at is just being quite ravenous. Um, and I found there, like I, I just happened, hold on. I just happened to stop at a place that had like a local drive-through, which I've never 
maybe it's not local and I just don't know about it, but it seemed local. It has like a barbecue sandwich, um, these little hush puppies, and then a little mac and cheese. So that was exciting. I didn't really want like the normal fast food. So I was excited to have something different. And um, so I'm gonna eat this and then we're gonna get gas and hit the road. But I was gonna tell you that I um, get so sad sometimes. Like I was getting so sad about leaving. And I was also reminding myself that I felt the same way when I went to Copenhagen. And that was like one of the best trips of my life. I think I told you guys that. But then I also um, saw on Facebook today that this day, like seven years ago, I went to Portland for 10 days and Obi and I were both so sad about it. We were just like, he, we like were missed each other the entire time and we're just really feeling our feelings about it, you know? And that was like on this day seven years ago. So I think this is just part of the process of leaving. <laughs> But I, both of that trip was amazing. Copenhagen is amazing. This is going to be amazing. So it's just any time I'm gone, like over five days, I think feels really like a long time. So, but I am already feeling better. I'm like on the road and happy. I listened to my friend Shannon Schottler, um, just started a podcast called The Messy Mucky Middle, which is so cute. It's all about transitions and like where we're at when we're in transition and what that tra those transitions look like. And I listened to her episode with Eden and it was so good. It was all about kind of slowing down, being more embodied and yeah. So it was, it was a great episode to listen to on the drive and I'm gonna eat. Okay, I'll spare you my eating sounds. Update on the barbecue, I mean, it was fine. I was better than getting like McDonald's or Taco Bell, so. I can't complain. Um, also, I'm going to listen to my other new favorite podcast, which is Sounds Like a Cult. I'm obsessed with it right now. It's so fun. Um, it makes me wish I had a co-host on my podcast because it, the energy is just so fun. Um, I think I'm going to listen to The Cult of Teal Swan. Either that or The Cult of Nonprofits. One of those two. Probably The Cult of Teal Swan. Yeah, because I just watched the documentary about her, well, like a month ago. It's fascinating. So I'm going to do that and then I'll see you guys in Charlotte. Bye. All right. I made it to Charlotte. I have no idea where the coffee shop is that I'm trying to go to, but it sets them close. I parked in this parking garage. Also, I was going to text Obes when I got here and tell him that I made it. And the moment I pulled into my parking spot, he texted me and said, where are you? And I was like, oh, I am, um, here. <laughs> I just I just got here. So anyway, that was sweet. And now I'm gonna find this coffee shop and report back later. They said that just one look and I'd get caught too. Cause there's something about you. coffee is good. Um, it did feel a bit like I was at someone's office having coffee, so that felt strange. And I didn't really want to like get all my work stuff out and start working. So I'm just going to wait until I get to the airport and work from there. Um, and I'm also having a hard time checking into my flight from LA to Bali, which I can do in person. I just would rather do it online. So I'm trying to figure that out there too. Um, so it looks like, like I'm in crazy traffic trying to park and it says that the parking lots are full. One of them is closed. I don't know what a backup plan for that even would be. I never even considered that that would be like a thing that's possible. That like all the parking lots would be closed. So I think my backup plan is going to be valet, but I don't have any small bills to tip the valet person. I don't want to tip 20 bucks. Um, and it also kind of feels like it's gonna be a while before I even get there. I'm glad I'm a little early. I hope I'm early enough at this point. I thought I was gonna be really early, but I might just be like now on time. Dang. Um, okay, update. They have a thing called an express deck. 
and basically it's more expensive than regular parking but also not as it seems better than valet somehow i don't know but also i went to get change at a gas station and they gave me a scratch off i had to buy a scratch off i use my nails oh, i hate it i hate it three nope 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 <laughs> nope and nope what a loss um okay let's go to the Centurion Lounge uh, in Charlotte. So I've never been to a Centurion Lounge at all. So we're gonna try and find it and then stay there until I board. We'll see. nice and sweaty. It was way warmer here than home. So a couple of little updates. Number one, I uh, my flight is currently delayed, which is kind of stressful. I already had a tight layover in LA, which is the big one <laughs> because I need to get from LA. To, I have to get to go to Singapore, which is my 16 hour flight. So if that one's delayed, it's the, it's the big one, you know? So, um, I'm a little stressed about that because I was already a little bit stressed about that. So now it's later, I'm really stressed about that because I have to go get my bag, like my checked bag, go out, go th check back in to my flight because they were booked separately, which we'll talk about in a second, go back through security. So it's just a little bit tense and it's an LAX, which is kind of a mess. So. That's extremely stressful. My like hope of what will I think be my saving grace is that it's at night. So um, my flight, like I'll get in at, well, I guess 9.40 now. It was gonna be 8.40. It takes off at like 11.40. So I'm hopeful that it's gonna be fine. You know, that there won't be that many, that many people there. But anyway, I need to gather my thoughts so that I can speak more coherently. <laughs> um, right now, I'm in Charlotte at um, the airport in the Centurion Lounge, which is the lounge for like American Express card holders. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I'm like, truthfully a little bit nervous because I booked first class tickets and I feel weird about it. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about like why I do that sometimes or often how I do that. Um, and I also use a lot of lounges and like how does that work for me? Because I think it makes me uncomfortable to be seen as doing th fancy things because of, I think just how I grew up and, um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So number one, the main reason that I book first class tickets often is mainly because of like my body. Um, I do not like feeling like my body is an issue in my life and especially for other people. So sometimes flying economy can feel like I'm putting my body in the position to be judged in a way that I don't appreciate. <clears throat> Do I think I should have to spend more money in order to avoid that? No. <laughs> um, also, 
you know, I could buy two economy tickets so that I'm never that close to a stranger. Oftentimes it's cheaper to just upgrade. So here is what that looks like for me. Typically what I'll do is I'll look up a flight. I will look up the cost of the first class versus like economy or premium economy. And um, if it's less than double, I'll typically book first. The other reasons that that is helpful, um, you get meals on most flights when you fly first if they are more than a certain amount of miles. Um, include That's included. Um, the other thing is you get free checked bags, oftentimes two free checked bags. Um, you don't have to pay overweight fees, which is really helpful for this flight because I had to fly out a bunch of books to sign. So just like little things like that, like it can save money in, in some ways. You know, I don't know that it would even out, you know what I mean? If, if it weren't for wanting to feel comfortable in my body, I don't know that it would be worth the expense necessarily. That being said, I also do a lot of little things to make it cheaper. So I typically try to book flights during the week, not on the weekend, um, meaning not booking them for that time, but booking them on that day. Like I will look for flights on like a Tuesday because a lot of times for whatever reason, they're cheaper. <laughs> um, I will also do weird things like I did for this flight, like I'm flying out of Charlotte. I looked at all the airports within like three hours of my home, flying out of Charlotte. Um, I'm flying one airline to LA and then another airline to Bali, which is why I have to go get my bags, recheck them, re-sign in in LA, which is inconvenient, but for me, it saved like, several thousand dollars so um that was you know to me worth it in order to be like comfortable and also save money on being comfortable other thing is for this trip i used a travel agent service so they were able to get it much less expensive than i would have been able to get it myself and that was risky and stressful if i'm honest because um, everything I had to do, I had to do through them, which I didn't really love. I probably wouldn't do that again, although I'm not, I don't regret doing it this time. It just puts me in kind of, it just makes me feel a little bit uneasy and I'd rather not feel that way. <laughs> so um, that's kind of that. I also use airline points. Typically, I don't typically get like, because I like to fly first and I do fly often, um, I tend to use them more for upgrading than for um, buying full flight. Being said, I don't typically put myself on the upgrade list because I also am not incredibly loyal to one airline. I do have like I think silver status with Delta because I do fly them most, but I don't fly them enough to be at the top of an upgrade list. and. Um, the unknown isn't like a happy place for me. I'd rather just use my points to upgrade and that works okay. Um, the other thing with that is that that is why I get lounge access at this point. So um, I have an American Express card that gets me the Centurion lounge. I have um, a Delta card which gives me access to the Delta lounge but honestly the Ameri American Express one also gives you access to the Delta lounge if you're flying Delta which you have to be flying Delta to use that credit card anyway so it's not much different thing and then if you fly first international you get access to the lounge that of the airline that you're connected to so you'll see in Singapore I'll go to the lounge if we go to Sing if we get to Singapore <laughs> at this point. Um, I'll go to the lounge there. But originally before I got credit cards, because I was really scared of credit cards for a long time, just because they sound scary. I, I'll tell you, I guess I'll tell you about that too. But um, before I would get credit cards and I didn't want to, when I was traveling a lot more it, or about the same as I am now in 2019, um, I just bought the Delta Access for the year. Um, and then this year I bought the Delta Access for, I think like it's called executive or something before I got the credit card. I just paid for it for the year because I knew I would be using it 
frequently. Now that I have the cards, I'm like, oh man, I shouldn't have. <laughs> but I didn't regret it the first year. And the first year I did it as a subscription. Like I paid like um, 50 bucks a month instead of paying all at once. And then this year I just paid all at once. I think paying 50 bucks a month felt better because I was traveling that much. And so it felt like, okay, I understand why I'm paying this. I was traveling monthly, but now, um, it, yeah, it doesn't, I, I don't feel as like, you know, getting the credit card, you feel like, oh, I should have just saved that money, but I didn't know I was gonna do that, so no regrets. That being said, things that about the lounge that are pros and cons. <laughs> pros, um, the bathrooms are always much nicer and cleaner, usually not as many lines. A lot of times they have showers, um, which is really helpful on trips like the one I'm on right now, where you're multiple airlines, multiple days. Um, it's nice to be able to shower and change clothes. Um, they usually have food. Sometimes the food is good, sometimes it's not. That's a hit or miss. Um, they often have open bars, which I don't typically utilize because I don't drink as much anymore. Um, and it's just like a nice, comfortable place to go be. Um, their cons, they tend to be pretty crowded. I think they're more popular now and like, back in the day they weren't as crowded as they are now but now they're like so crowded like sometimes you can't even find a seat um and it can feel worse than even being in the gate area although the seating is much more comfortable if you just like wait a minute you can usually get a seat and it's much more comfortable um the other pro is like they have rooms like this which are like phone rooms at, at some of them so i can come in here and like record which i could never do like in the lobby so um yeah, for me, it's beneficial because I work while I travel. So um, it's helpful to have a place to just kind of go and know I can just sit down and work. Oftentimes I'll have like little cubicles and stuff that you can do. Coffee is free. Um, coffee is bad. It's typically bad. <laughs> but you can, um, you know, if if you're someone like me who is like on a two coffees a day regimen <laughs> and your body is like used to it, accustomed to it, and it's going to like get a headache if you don't do it um then it's nice to have because starbucks a lot of times are like hard to find or have really really long lines sometimes you can like use the app to order starbucks but sometimes you can't so it's nice to just know worst case scenario i can go into the lounge i can pull a double shot i can down it really fast and then go to my gate and typically i use the lounge even if i have a short layover let's say i have like a a solid 30 minutes I will literally and Obi and I have done this together we'll literally like go to a lounge go to the bathroom down a double shot grab a banana chug a glass of water and then like go to the flight so um that's on that the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about that I'm feeling kind of self-conscious about and I know that you guys don't judge me but I judge me so um is that I have been when I'm traveling not bringing a water bottle which is something that I used to do religiously um the reasoning for that is mainly just it annoys the crap out of me to carry it around I've broken every single one I've ever traveled with I tend to drop them I don't have a way to just like hold it naturally while I'm doing everything it never fits into my bag um and when you fly first they give you bottles of water anyway and then i would have like my full bottle um like tucked into the back seat of the seat in front of me and it was just typically a mess and then i would end up leaving it somewhere or breaking it so um i have quit doing that i'm not saying that's the right move but i am saying that's what i'm currently doing um I'm thinking about that a lot, especially because I'm going to Bali right now where you can't drink the water. So I'll be drinking significantly out of water bottles because um, that's what's safe. So um, that's kind of on my mind as well. Anyway, I just wanted to like sit down and like share that because I feel like one, I wish someone had told me all of that stuff when I, when I was like newer to this stuff. But two, because I just needed to get it off my chest so that I could like feel comfortable because I'm really excited about, I have a 16 hour flight from hopefully <laughs> if it all works out, um, from LA to Singapore. 
and it's in first so it's like a lay down seat and singapore air is like a really nice airline they do first class really well it's like a bucket list thing of mine that i get to do and i'm really excited about it but i didn't want you guys to think i spent like 10 grand on it because that um one is just not how i would spend my money and two um it just makes me feel self-conscious i guess i think it's the easiest way to phrase it i definitely i got most of my ticket was paid for with the organization i intended to go to bali with and then i just paid to upgrade for the rest of it and used like a cheap service to make that possible and a little workarounds so it wasn't bad it was cheaper than like buying a flight to bali would have been for me so and I know I can hear you guys now because you're so sweet saying like you do not need to be like self-conscious, but I guess I just am. So that being said, I guess what I need to do now is figure out why my flight is delayed and if I'm going to be okay in LA. I guess there's not really much I can do about it. I'm, and my main concern, quite frankly, is that I did pay for a first class seat to Singapore and I'm worried that if I get bumped that I won't... That they'll put me in economy which would suck i know that's happened to friends of mine before um and i really don't want that to happen to me so that's like my main concern so maybe i'll look up average security time at lax for at the time i'm gonna be there and just see if that works but anyway I also wanted to tell you quickly, sorry I'm keeping you here, just my talking head video. Um, I also wanted to tell you that kind of my flight schedule as it's as it's intended to be. So my flight here is supposed to take off at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, um, which would get me to LA at 8.40 LA time, which would be 11.40 Eastern time. So that and then I would have um three hours so maybe two hours now um until 11 40 um before takeoff on my next flight my hope of hopes would be that I can get my bag check back in go through security then change clothes and get on the flight because I would love to be able to wear like sweats on the flight and not change in the plane bathroom that's my goal it's my ambition i don't think that's probably gonna happen but you know fingers crossed that being said um once i have a 16 hour flight from from la to singapore and then i have an eight hour layover in singapore um i'm undecided as to whether or not i'm gonna go into singapore itself just because going in and out of customs you have to like do a bunch of stuff um you have to actually enter the country and then come back in and I don't know that that's worth it you know for me but also I mean you're in I'm in Singapore it feels hard to just not go so my seven brain is like if you're that close you have to go but that that eight hour layover and then have about a two an hour two and a half hour flight to Bali um which will get me there at about 8 p 8 30 p.m um, Bali time, which is 8.30 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday. So it's Friday now. I'll be there on Sunday. It's like three full days of traveling for me or, you know, two-ish days of travel. And then I will check into the airport, into my hotel. Um, I booked a car through the hotel to come pick me up and then I'll check in my hotel that night and then either give you a tour that night or in the morning depending on how I'm feeling, which is probably going to be pretty tired. So that is the plan. I'm hoping that I'll be able to vlog with you until at least I get on my flight to LA. Um, and then I'll probably edit you on the plane. And then um, I'll start the Singapore. I got to figure that out. Yeah, I'll probably sit here and figure that out right now. But yeah, right now I need to do some work <laughs> and um, plan next week's tasks, um, make a schedule for vlogs, kind of figure out how the timing's gonna work on that. And then I need to um, get through my emails. So 
that was it friends. <laughs> um, I'll keep you updated as much as I can about how things are going. Sometimes flights that get delayed get undelayed. So maybe that's what's gonna happen for me this round. Really hopeful. Okay, I have been just getting as much work done as I could in this little booth for probably close to an hour. And um, you're not supposed to be in here for longer than an hour. So I'm gonna wrap her up. Um, and go ahead and get toward my gate. Um, the flight leaves or like boards in about 50 minutes. And because I know that delayed flights can sometimes, they try and like clean them and board them faster. Um, I want to leave sooner than I normally would. Like I probably ordinarily would have, would leave like 30 minutes before we board, but I'm just gonna um, go a little bit earlier. I wanted to update you on the tech bag um, that I brought. I am absolutely obsessed with it. A few things that I added but since the, I talked to you last is I added this, which is um, I normally keep like on our charging station at home. It's a um, tech screen cleaner. And I figure since I'm going to Bali, it's gonna be like, I'll be working outside a lot. Um, you just like spray the screen down and then it's like a felt tube and you kind of use it as like a squeegee essentially on your screen and I love it. And um, then I have, it has a place for my Apple Pencil, a place for like another pen. It's just like such a cool little thing. Now, what I will say is like, it's thick. Like it takes up the majority of my bag. So like, even like when you look at it closed, like zipping it, like it zips fine. It's just with both the iPad and the laptop in there, like it's, it's hefty. Um, that being said, the benefit to me is like, um, while I'm working, like I can just like pull that out, like on the airplane, I can put this in the back seat of the seat in front of me and then just have all my tech stuff right there, really easy to get to. Um, also, I was able to fit my headphones in. Here's the way I wriggled it around is I have a fanny pack that has like literally my whole life in it. And I've been wearing this on my body and then I have my headphones in my bag where this would go. And I figure if like I go to check in and they're like, whoa, you have, that's an additional personal item, which is, you know, possible. I'll just swap them out, the headphones for the fanny pack. And then I can wear my headphones on my body. You know what I mean? No one's gonna say anything about that. So um, I felt really smart about that <laughs> for doing that. And, um, yeah, so I'm gonna repack my bag right now and then go ahead and hit the road or hit the walking sidewalk, <laughs> moving sidewalk. Okay, that cross body, can you just put it in that bag? And ladies and gentlemen.